In the last lesson, we picked apart this slide. We talked specifically how the client and the server were trying to do symmetric encryption for confidentiality and a message authentication code for integrity. Specifically, we talked about how authentication didn't come into play until the certificate authority arrived on the scene. The certificate authority provided authentication of the certificate, which then provided authentication to the symmetric keys used for the message authentication code. The main idea there is you cannot attain these three things, confidentiality, integrity, and authentication, unless you have all three of these key players. And these three key players all form a triangle known as the public key infrastructure. Anytime you have an instance of a client, server, and certificate authority, you have a public key infrastructure. So let's talk about it. So there are three entities which form a PKI, the client, the server, and the CA. The client is the entity that needs to connect securely to something or to verify a particular identity. The server is the entity that needs to prove its identity. And finally, the certificate authority is the governing entity which verifies identities and generates certificates. Now, most of us are familiar with the PKI for the World Wide Web. That's the one we've already been talking about in a way. In the World Wide Web PKI, the clients are the web browsers, things like Chrome or Firefox or Safari and so on. And they're also anything in the Internet of Things days which might be making a secure SLRTLS connection. The servers are the different websites out there, things like google.com, your banking website.com, your email provider.com, etc., etc. And the certificate authorities are any of the big public web certificate authorities. This list of these five right here are the five we talked about, which have signed 98% of these certificates out there. But the main thing I want to point out is this is not the only set of PKIs that exist. Other PKIs out there also exist. For example, there's a set of these three entities that exist for the purpose of code signing. How many of you have at some point tried to install software on a Windows box and received warnings that look like this? Well, what's going on here on the left is you're trying to install Firefox and Windows is telling you that the verified publisher of this software is Mozilla. Here on the right, you're trying to install something and Windows is telling you that we don't know who the publisher is, so be careful. The code signing PKI involves its own set of a client, a server, and CAs. Here, the client is the operating system. The operating system is the client that needs to verify the identity of a particular piece of software. And the software is taking the role of the server. The software is the entity that needs to prove its identity to the OS. And there's a whole set of code signing CAs that exist to sign and verify the identity of software so that the operating system will trust it. Again, notice these three entities. These code signing CAs are not necessarily the same CAs that sign website certificates. They're a whole other set of CAs. So as you can see, anytime you have a set of these three entities, you have a separate PKI. You could even have separate web based PKIs. For example, a lot of you may work at a company that has an internal corporate PKI, meaning your internal corporation likely has a bunch of internal corporate resources, things like HR portals or ticketing systems or scheduling systems or chat programs or whatever the case that need to be accessed securely. Well, it doesn't always make sense to always buy certificates from GoDaddy and Ident Trust and Sectigo every time you want to stand up a new internal corporate resource. What most corporations end up doing is they set up their own internal corporate CA, and then they use that CA to sign and create certificates for their own internal resources. Then the clients, which is their employees or their employee work computers and phones who need to access these resources will inherit trust for these resources because they trust the corporate CA. So again, a PKI is simply one set of client, server, and CA. And the web PKI is the one that we're going to focus on for the rest of this course. But definitely keep in mind, that is not the only PKI that exists out there. In any case, that's it for this lesson. 
the main takeaway is understanding what a PKI is and the players that make up a PKI. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Hey YouTube, if you enjoyed that lesson, then you'll also enjoy the full course that it came from, Practical TLS. It's a deep dive into SSL and TLS, taught methodically and intentionally, full of easy illustrations and in the simplest way possible. You'll get to learn cryptography, certificates, private keys, the handshake, OpenSSL, and everything you need to become an SSL expert. To learn more, check out pracnet.net slash TLS, and if you need more convincing that this is the best TLS training course, then check out the other free lesson previews on YouTube. Thank you, and have a great day.